Hi guys. It is a gray, gloomy day. Here we're in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We have survived Christmas 2019 and now we have stumbled into Thursday morning, December 26, 2019. <coughs> Sometimes referred to as Boxing Day. Won't well, get into a Boxing Day rant. And uh, oh yes, by the way, I am Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, and we are just doing what we do every day. And that is chronicling the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet <clears throat> as we head into the year 2020. Good Lord, get your fireworks ready for 2020 coming up in a few days. Uh, but, but until then, we're going to do what we do every day in 2019. And that is chronicle the collapse. Before I get into today's collapse, just want to send out a big thank you to two kind-hearted listeners, Robert Meyer and <clears throat> Ehud Gerlich, for their very kind Christmas cards to my PayPal account yesterday. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Anyone who has ever supported whatever I do here on YouTube, Sancho Panza, and I really do appreciate the holiday tidings. And with that pleasant task out of the way, you know, all our eyes here in the Doomosphere, of course, are turned to 2020. But before we dive into that, you know, sometimes it takes, before we barrel into the brick wall moving forward, sometimes it's just good before we do just to take a look back at where we have been. And I am so sorry, I cannot remember uh, which one of you alert listeners sent me this plain and simple article from, I guess, out of Norway, Science Norway. <laughs> just kind of framing it as we head into uh, wherever we're heading um, with this straight ahead article for any of you guys who do not understand this. Humans have always caused plant and animal extinctions. <coughs> Our warming planet is pushing some plant and animal species towards extinction but there is actually no such thing, well, no such thing since we got here, as untouched nature. Humans have always altered their environment. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> For those of you who do not understand this, beavers build dams and modify their environment. It is a survival strategy that has served them well over the millennia. In many ways, we humans are the same. Yes, we are the same as beavers. We change our environment, and not always in ways that are good for the planet. This need to alter our surroundings is baked into our very being, say two Norwegian scientists who have just written a book about the issue. This is Hans K. Steinen, a biology professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Quote, this is simply what makes us people. Yes, destroying a planet is simply what makes us people. There you go. <clears throat> Steinen and his colleague Raidara Anderson have written a book about our relationship with nature starting from the time we evolved to be humans up to the present day. Their book provides an overview of the field and offers their thoughts about the situation. <clears throat> okay. Their conclusion 
is that we humans have mostly taken whatever we can, not because we are deliberately out to cause harm, but for food and to survive. Our strength as a species has been our ability to find ways to take advantage of the earth and its natural resources. It is this ability that has made us the dominant species on the planet. However, when it comes to other species, we have always been bad players. The authors say that humans have been changing the climate ever since we began to walk, says Steinhein, quote, we must accept that this is a biological explanation. There is a correlation between our success as a species and the environmental crisis that is taking place today. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Even though it may seem like climate change is a relatively new phenomenon, it actually isn't, the authors write. Ever since we became humans, we have done things that have influenced the planet and its climate. Biologists estimate that just 20% of the world can be considered true wilderness. I guess they're talking about somewhere at the bottom of the ocean, but of course all that is getting ready to change with deep sea mining. Alright, this is for the people suffering from the noble savage myth. The myth of the noble savage. This is what these biologists have to say about the myth of the noble savage. We may think that indigenous people, whatever indigenous people, whoever they are, had little effect on the planet, but Steinlein and Anderson say that is a myth. That is exactly what the myth of the noble savage is. It is a myth, and it's time for the myth to be exploded. Okay. As early as 50,000 years ago, well, as early as a million years ago, but as early as 50,000 years ago, when the very first people came to Australia, their meddling with nature had catastrophic consequences. Just five to 10,000 years after people arrived in Australia, for example, all all of the megafauna or animals weighing more than 45 kilograms, that's about 100 pounds, were gone. Gone. 23 out of 24 marsupials died out, as well as a large variety of birds and reptiles. This hunt for key species among Australia's large animals probably contributed to climate change. Their absence, you know, the absence of the megafauna, changed the environment. <clears throat> Steinem argues that one mushroom in Australia demonstrates the truth of this idea. The mushroom species called Spiromella thrived in the dung of big animals. When people came to Australia, this mushroom was everywhere, but <coughs> then it disappeared. This happened more than 40,000 years ago, probably thousands of years before the continent's climate shifted from wet to dry and fires ravaged the countryside. Uh, yes, the fires ravaged the countryside of Australia. Imagine that. At the same time, the vegetation changed from rainforest to drought 
tolerant species. Yes, these are the drought tolerant species that are burning down to the ground at this very minute. Okay, quoting uh, the authors. <clears throat> Quote, if the change in climate had caused the mass extinction, one would expect the vegetation to change and become drought tolerant first, and then the makeup of the animal populations would change afterwards. But what actually happened was the opposite. The extinction took place before the climate changed. Of course, not everyone thinks this argument holds water. Some other scientists believe that it was climate change that led to the extinction of the mushroom, not human influence. Uh, the, you know, this debate uh, going on, this never-ending debate. It's likely that a number of factors played a role in these drastic changes, but Steinen says there is still little doubt, well, no doubt, that our culture has contributed to environmental destruction throughout history, albeit to varying degrees in different parts of the world. On various islands in the Pacific, scientists are more certain that humans essentially eradicated everything. After Australia, we continued <clears throat> our destructive journey through Asia and America. The introduction of agriculture also was responsible for deep changes starting 10,000 years ago. Then came the Industrial Revolution beginning in seven, the 1700s, which really accelerated the damage. <coughs> and the destruction we are causing now, which of course has been labeled the Great Acceleration, is the word that ecologists use. Uh, you know, we are, you know, not only in the Anthropocene, we are in the Great Acceleration phase of the Anthropocene. Uh, what uh, biologist uh, William Rees, who I will be interviewing, posting that interview on Sunday, would call our plague phase. We are now in our plague phase as we bring on the Great Acceleration, which started about 1950, roughly. The destruction we are causing now is so much more extensive than ever before that scientists are warning that we are in the process now of causing the Earth's sixth great mass extinction. The fact that this destructive behavior lies in our nature does not mean that we can continue to behave this way. The first people who came to Australia or New Zealand can hardly be held responsible for hunting animals and birds to extinction because they did not fully understand the consequences of their actions. Hmm. We, however, know better, Steinen says. Quote, that means we <coughs> have no excuse. We must take responsibility for the changes we are making to the planet. Yes, we must take responsibility. So with that, uh, I, the little dog and I are going to take responsibility for making changes to the planet. I am getting ready to alter uh, my my yard. Uh, so the little dog and I, we're getting ready to get in the gas-sucking truck, head to Home Depot, and uh, 
to build a fence to alter the altered reality of Mad Max about 70 feet from this chair. Mad Max is in full swing and uh, the little dog and I are going to do some altering of the planet with a fence from Home Depot. You know, that's where lumber, where do you think lumber comes from? I mean, obviously, you know, eggs come from the supermarket. Lumber comes from Home Depot. So anyway, uh, oh yes, if you did enjoy this little uh, lesson about uh, human nature here at Collapse Chronicles, please take a couple of minutes to uh, thumb up this video if you did not like having the uh, myth of the noble savage exploded. Uh, take a few seconds to thumb down this video and while you're over here we would love to have you subscribe and do keep an eye out on Sunday. Uh, I will be posting the final the final Collapse Chronicle interview before 2020 where I have the great pleasure of interviewing biologist and ecologist William Rees uh, talking about the plague phase of humanity, how we have become a plague on this planet. Uh, heading into 2020, getting ready to get everything we deserve as global industrial civilization and the planet collapse around us. So I will be posting that video on Sunday. Get out there and alter your environment, you little busy little beaver, while you still can, and get put your seat belts on. 2020 is right around the corner. Bye, guys.